What's going on guys? It's Quasi Dog here, and in today's quick video, I just want to talk about the topic of online security. More specifically, security around your online identity. And this could be things as simple as your email to something more complex as let's say your online banking or logging into government websites that might have even more individualized information than you'd like to admit. Now, in 2020, I'm sure everybody has seen the various news articles talking about all the ways that intruders can get into your online accounts, whether it be uh, SIM card cloning, SIM card swapping, now even cellular port outs. There are a lot of ways that people can clone your information and clone your mobile number, which is commonly what a lot of us are using for two-factor authentication. Now, if the term two-factor authentication isn't even something you've heard of before, what it is is a second means of security for your online password. So whether it be a mobile device or a computer, uh, when you key in your password, Typically, people would use a cellular telephone number and two-factor authentication to have a very unique and short time use code sent to their cell phone via SMS as a second form of identifying that they are them. And up to probably in the last year or two, that was a very safe and secure way to do things. But given again all of the before mentioned ways that individuals are now getting those two-factor authentication codes, it's time to think of another solution. And that solution is more so physical and I actually have it right here. So these guys are actually physical authentication keys. And these are from a company called Ubico. They have a ton of different models. Uh, this one here is primarily for uh, like Apple devices. We have Lightning on one end right here. And then we have USB-C, let's say for MacBooks. And then this one is again, USB-C. There we go, get it to focus. USB-C on one side, and it actually has NFC baked in as well. And there are so many different things using NFC right now, uh, mobile electronics like tablets and smartphones, but even a lot of computers now are using NFC. So rather than plugging this into something physical, it's just as easy as giving it a quick tap and away you go. So the way that you would use, let's say a Ubico key, something that allows you to do a physical two-factor authentication is when you're on a new or untrusted device, something like a public computer, or you buy a new cell phone and you're just signing into your accounts for the first time. Rather than receiving a text message, you're actually gonna have the ability to be prompted to use your physical security key, in this case, a Ubico key. So after keying that in, you can either physically plug it in or in this case, using this model, you can tap it and that will prove to that device that you are in fact you because theoretically you should be one of the only ones, if not the only one, with one of these security keys. Now it goes deeper than that. Of course, there are a multitude of different ways that you can use a physical security key. We're not gonna go over all of them today. Uh, I will link the manufacturer's website in the video description so you guys can learn all about how to set it up and all of the different things that it has to offer. But using this as a form of two-factor authentication is honestly probably one of the smartest things that you can do. Now for me personally, the way that I have this set up is if I'm going into a new device, whether it be a new smartphone or a new computer, I typically allow my accounts to trust that device. If I'm connecting to a, a computer or a smartphone or a tablet for the very first time, I have it set that my two-factor authentication requires me to either tap NFC or physically plug in one of these Yubico keys at least once to make sure that that then becomes my trusted device. So if an intruder happens to guess my password or if I use one of those uncommon or I guess I should say common tactics of using either not a unique enough password or a similar or the same password as I do for other services, at least when that individual tries to use that on an untrusted device, it will ask for a physical authenticator and not something digital that's still able, in a sense, if they're skilled enough, to be cloned or obtained for use to sign in. So 
That's why I can't really demonstrate this to be completely honest. Um, I have all of my devices now trusted with this particular Yubico key which is what I'm using for my own personal security. I think I might be making the switch to iOS sometime soon when I'm due for my next phone. So that's why I went also with an iOS version, kind of as a just in case. Um, but I'm gonna have these listed in the video description below so you guys again can take a look at the manufacturer's site, learn all about them. And this video in a sense is less about the Yubico key, which I mean, key features, it's super awesome. It's non-powered, so it's not going to die to the point that you can't use it. There's no moving parts, so it is water resistant and crush resistant. And again, it's super portable. Like you could totally take this little guy here, throw it in your wallet, sit on it, and you're not gonna princess in the pee that and be uncomfortable when you sit on it. You're probably not even gonna notice it's there or just throw it on a key ring or a lanyard or anything like that. But I'm gonna let you guys learn all the ins and outs of this Yubico and I want you guys to get started on thinking about how often you use the same password for a multitude of sites or how often you give out your telephone number when it comes to signing up for SMS-based contests and a variety of other things because every time you're doing one of those common practices, you're putting your information at risk and that can easily cost you thousands upon thousands of dollars in either trying to recover old accounts based on time and actual cost, actual money, or you could have more money stolen. Somebody can get into your bank account or into your cash app or one of those various platforms where now we're storing digital currency. So do yourself a favor, check out the link below. Again, it is Yubico. They didn't sponsor this video. I reached out to them. I asked them if I could take a look at these because I truly thought that I could use them myself. And I'm absolutely floored. I, I think this is such a cool idea. This isn't necessarily new. There have been physical authenticators for a while, but just having something so sleek and so por portable and so versatile, especially with something like this guy here, the NFC variant, just tapping an untrusted device once or using this as your primary means of authenticating is really going to either allow you to safely continue those habits, whether it be using the same password or a very commonly used password for services and using two-factor authentication, or allowing this to actually generate very, very unique passwords for you. That way, once you tap, you're signed in. Not only does this work with a Yubico app, but it also works with services like uh, 1Password, I believe it's called. Uh, so you can use this to authenticate into 1Password and then let that utility service all of your passwords and all of your sign-ins. So do yourself a favor, do at least a little bit of homework, if not the initial investment into something like this, and help mitigate the potential to have your information stolen or your online identity or online accounts compromised because I see all of the time on Twitter, people's YouTube channels getting hacked, people's social media getting hacked. And more often than not in 2020, as much as the capabilities are there for people to get into it more often, more often, but with COVID-19 and, and the direction that we're going with technology, a lot of people are actually using online tools like YouTube or like Amazon to make their income and make their living possible. And as awesome as that is, it's, it's also kind of scary because it means you're more susceptible to intrusion and, and different things like that. So don't let something like that disrupt your life. Don't let it disrupt your income. Do a little bit of research and uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know, answer a couple of questions, okay. Let me know whether or not you use a very commonly used password across all platforms, whether it's something that contains your name, whether it's something that contains your email address, which is common. Uh, for security questions, let me know if you use something like your mother's maiden name or your first pet's name, and then answer the question whether or not you have that information somewhere on social media. And if you answer any of those in the way that I think you're going to, then you should probably take a look at one of these. It's really gonna help you out. Uh, so until my next video, guys, my name is Crazy Dog. You guys have been awesome, and I'll catch you all in my next one. Take care.